Thank you. Big thank you to Coach Mello for joining us tonight. Had a great conversation with him. Glad to have him back on the show. Was one that uh, is a guy that's joined us uh, in the past. But uh, now moving on here in the Division Two realm, still Jimmy. The Javelinas down at Texas A&M Kingsville. They're at a Division One opponent to the future schedule. Take a look at this. They're locked in. UTRGV for the people. Who is that? University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. There you uh, go. Kobe, there you I go. have an important question for you. What is a Javelina? A Javelina? That's a great question. Uh, shout out to Coach Bish, who's been on this show and who I talk with uh, semi-frequently, the defensive coordinator down there at uh, Tamuk, or Tamuk, whatever the, however they sure. go. Sure. Uh, the Javelina is basically like, uh, think of like a, a poor man's warthog. I think yeah. I, is the best way I could kind of think about it. Yeah. It's uh a, a pig type creature that's down there, pretty common down there. They've got one in a, a stuffed, a taxidermied one in a display case in the football office. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm picking up like Pumbaa from the Lion King a little bit from the logo. <laughs> that's that's actually yeah. that's actually not too far off. No, um, yeah. I'm I, trying to see if I can uh, pull is up. Is that some like a Central American like animal or something? Like what? Uh, not that I know of. Here we go. We've got a picture of an adult and of a small baby javelina. I don't know if they go by a different term when they are young. Boom. What do you think? <laughs> well, baby's pretty cute. Poor man's warthog. The baby's pretty cute, dude. But uh, they're still badass. So cute, cute shout out to the baby. javelinas. You see here they've got the deal set up September 4th, 2027. They will be traveling to UTRGV. And uh, this is an interesting one because... They haven't played a D1, in, uh, I believe, since 2016 was the last time uh, that Kingsville has played a Division One squad. Now, I'm blanking on who exactly that was. But this URT, uh, UTRGV, good God. I'm going to start referring to them as their uh, their mascot instead, I believe. It is the uh, Vaqueros. That's kind of a cool one. And you know what? Do we, need to, do we need to pull up another? I think we do. Do we need to potentially I, pull up another? I think yeah. that's going to be necessary at this point. Vaquero. Boom. Um, yeah, this is something. I okay, need to see. it's like a some type of cowboy kind of take on a on a it's a Mexican Mexican vaquero. Yeah, so this is like this is kind of the common like across all of them. This is kind of the general image. Oh, this the resolution is awful, but uh, we're gonna roll with it. Okay, you get the idea. Oh, yeah, I, right. I, the I idea. The it. idea is there. That's our vaquero. Sure. He's pretty badass. Fits the kind of Texas Mexican theme we got going on down there. It's all, all well and good. Anyways, Javelinas Vaqueros in 2027, September 4th. Uh, they will travel to their home campus. It's in Edinburgh to play at uh, Robert and Janet Vacar Stadium or Satellite Campus in Brownsville to play at Sam's Memorial Stadium. Neither location has been perform- confirmed. Excuse me. So this is an interesting n- piece of news because the Vaqueros are reestablishing a football program. It's been dormant since 1950. So they had a program, 1950, cut it off. Now they're bringing it back, uh, what, 70 years later, 70-odd years later? So an interesting situation down there in Texas. And they used to be actually, they used to go by the University of Texas Pan American. They will have a full exhibition schedule in 2024. They'll officially begin play in conference as a member of the Southland Conference in 2025. So this year for them is all scrimmages. They probably are redshirting a bunch of kids, bring, you know, trying to bring in that class as a lot of new teams and new programs do. And then 2025, they'll start in the Southland Conference as an official member. This game, though, not till 2027. I wonder, <clears throat> so you said they're like scrimmaging and practicing. I wonder if what those kids' eligibility rules are for the NCAA. Ah, that's a good question. I believe it's all the same. So would you go there and waste a year of eligibility or what? How would that work? Yeah, so I'm, I mean, that's a good – I, I, again, this is for me. I'm just assuming it's all in the same if you're scrimmaging against other teams. Like you're using – because you have that clock, right? You have your like 10 semesters or whatever clock of once you get enrolled into classes at a, an NCA institution or whatever that is. It's just a college institution. And um, I would assume, again, assume in this case it's a bunch of guys that are using red shirts. Right, and they redshirt a whole class, and they go through this. That's uh, we talked about Calvin University in Michigan, a new D three team, addition to the MIAA. They're doing, they're going through the same thing right now. Uh, Rio Grande, yes, that's how they say it in Ohio. Uh, yeah, yeah, not Rio, Rio. Um, and they got a bass fishing team we talked about a while back. But uh, they're doing the same thing right now, an NAIA squad. So they're a lot of the Red Storms. There's a lot of teams going through this right now. I'd imagine eligibility wise, it's an interesting. Interesting piece, but the uh, Javelina is only the second program that have announced non-conference games against the Vaqueros. Texas State is also, uh, they have dates for 2027 and 2030. 2030. What the hell, dude? Hey, they're thinking ahead. 
I mean, I like it, but oh my goodness. So looking at the Javelinas, though, this past year, I mean, the squad was 7-3 and three in 2023. They were uh, up there in the Lone Star Conference. Obviously, not. Uh, they were behind the uh, UT Permian Basin. UTPB had a, a really solid year. We've talked about them quite a bit on this show. Uh, Central Washington, they met in the championship in that conference. But uh, 2024 schedule for the Javelinas is interesting. They uh, open up with some, with some pretty decent out-of-conference games. They go at home against Colorado Mesa, and they go on the road to Mississippi College. You got an RMAC and a GSC contest mixed in there. And you're thrown right into the thick of it at UTPB, uh, the reigning conference champs. That's going to be a, a really fun one. Week three, I believe. Week four, because I got a bye week working in there. Week four for the Javelinas. Sol Ross State, Jimmy, a Division three team making the jump to Division two in the Lone Star. They have their first official season in the Lone Star as well. So they'll play uh, the Javelinas in week number five. Big time. I did not know there was going to be a D3 jumping up to D2. Yes, we had a D3 jump to D2. We had an NAI, obviously, Roosevelt joining the GLIAC. So two teams uh, that made that jump. So that's the news on the Javelinas.